Thank you very much for that introduction, Anthony. It's uh, wonderful to have the opportunity to speak to Martin. I know many of you know him um, through the book club and through um, obviously uh, where, you're, where you're living and everything like that. So it's my first evening meeting Martin. So I, I'm, I only know him through the book and through his creation. And um, I have the privilege of speaking to him because I'm trying to write a book myself. So some of this will be for my own self-interest and I'm warning you of that now. But um, we'll start off with yourself, Martin, and just about yourself for, for anyone who's joining who doesn't know and also for, for myself. Uh, t tell us about yourself and how you came to, to be interested in writing. What was your inspiration? Were you always a creative person um, or is it something that came to you later in life? Hi okay, Kate, uh, thanks very much. Um, yes, I've always had an interest in writing um, from very young. Uh, when I was in primary school or secondary school, uh, I know uh, we used to be given, you know, the general topic essays, you know, my I, what I did over summer, my favourite pet, all this type of stuff. And um, I used to take a section of headings and write essays and then it would build up to a point where the teacher would hand out a topic and I'd already have it done. So I'd just flick through it and hand it in. So I had that night free when everyone else was at home, jot down their essay. Um, and it just kind of spiraled from there. Um, I had a, a good English teacher in secondary school and I, I, I liked him. Uh, and I think that's, that's a bonus when you're, when you're in school. Um, now, I, from the people who've read the book, I, I'm not a fantastic speller. I do make small mistakes, um, but uh, I am getting that looked at. Um, but yeah, I remember as well when I was uh, quite young, I think I would have been about 16 or 17, and I had an idea for a little short story, and I start jotting it down. And it started with a suicide note which was, you know, for a 16, 17 year old, it was, it was quite uh, a topic to take on. But the first page was a suicide note. And then I, I wrote, wrote the suicide note, went through and started the story. And then a friend of mine called and we went out. And I got home about two and a half hours later to my mom, my aunt, my sister, the local priest, uh, and all of them in floods, they were all crying and how can we help you and all this kind of, and I, I, I was just kind of, I was like, what, what, what are you talking about guys? And my mother had gone into my room to clean and she picked up the note and thought I had written a suicide note. Um, mm. So when I stopped laughing and they showed the priest out, um, I had to explain to her that it's, it was just a story. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, from quite young, I was uh, I was writing. Yeah, I suppose there's something in that. I mean, um, you know, they obviously felt that what you had written was so true and that you were obviously putting yourself in that, uh, that very unusual position. And the character, Sam, in this, who we discovered the world through, uh, unusually from the opposite side, because he's not used to the universe. He spent his whole life on the other side. So we're kind of following him into the book and um, he's 15,000 years old and he's an angel of death and he knows everything about that and nothing about life what kind of inspired you to to kind of choose that as a main character and um, it's it's an interesting way of of looking at I suppose Dublin but also every all, all the characters that you meet in the book and um, what inspired you to to approach it from that point of view um where I actually got the uh for Sam well, that's a, that's a, it's a good question. Um, mm. um, I think it grew organically, to be honest with you. Um, I knew I wanted him to be na naive in certain ways and then uh, very knowledgeable in other ways. Um, so you have that kind of playing against each other. Uh, and as I was writing, like, I didn't write the start first. So as I was writing... Um, I was able to go back then and introduce as in where he came from. Um, so it, it, it naturally took form for me. Um, but uh, it, it was just one of those sparks of an idea. What if, you know, and 
Um, I think it landed landed it quite itself quite well, uh, where he has the ability to heal. He can read people, you know. Um, I I thought it it was good for the story. Where did so you didn't begin this chronologically as we discover where where no. where did you begin where was your story beginning for you the what was the concept the initial idea yeah well well basically what i do when i get an idea i will uh, a brain dump so i'll just get a, a, a sheet of blank paper circle in the middle the main idea and then just branch off from there um and i think I started with Max. I started with the thought of what if there was a second coming of Christ? Mm -hmm. And um, then it it kind of grew from there. And how would people see him? Would people want to use him? That type of thing. Mm. Yeah, there's quite a kind of a cynical, critical view of the church in the book. And obviously we've all heard so many stories of of late. What, What kind of drew you to that as well? Um, was there anything in particular that you wanted to say about it or was it just again another another means to uh, t- tell an interesting story no well I think it's it, like I, I I wouldn't berate the Catholic Church or, or, or I'm not a Catholic Church basher as such um, as in uh, Sam's best friend is a, a priest um, in the book so um uh, no, I think it just played well, uh, as in, yet again, you have the two sides of the same entity with uh, Father John and then the church. And um, like it, it is a good against evil, and mm. but they're part of the same thing. Absolutely. So it was, it was like uh, kind of an inner struggle, really, more than anything else. And how everything can coexist together. Yes. And speaking of coexistence, so it's an intricate world that you've created. There's fairies, there's demons, there's angels. Um, what was your influence behind that? Is was it are they the type of stories that you read and that you're drawn to? Or yeah, um, I am a huge fan of Stephen King. Uh, mm. I, I, I love his world, uh, obviously Tolkien as well. Um, and then um, you have the likes of uh, Stephen Leather. Uh, he's a fantastic author and he would write about um, exorcists and stuff like that uh, and um, there's another author called Mike Carey and, and uh, he has some uh, wonderful sets of books and it deals with the whole exorcism angels type of thing yeah. uh, and then I've always just really had an interest in fairies <laughs> and yeah and fairies I mean from Irish folklore or from yeah, well, you know, you've always heard the stories of the, the they're in the bottom of the garden and the they, they have a... kind of thing. Yeah, and it comes up a good bit in it as well. Yeah. Um, and then some of the themes you're dealing with. I mean, you're dealing with life, you're dealing with death, you're dealing with familial love, and it's all in this very action-packed um, kind of backdrop. I mean, what kind of drew you to those? Was it just? I suppose it's we all probably write and again we, we write to kind of discover things nearly about ourselves and how we feel about things sometimes uh, what kind of, kind of did you discover in the process of of dealing with these things that many of us in our day-to-day life only deal with sometimes but as an author you kind of have to invite it all in at the same time and uh, yes. make some decisions about it so how did you feel covering some of these these topics um i felt quite comfortable um like Throughout my life growing up, I have had, uh, my life has been touched by um, self-harming, it's been touched by suicide, it's been touched by um, uh, addiction, that type of thing. So um, it's things that I could take from the past as well. So, um, uh, you know, and draw from that. And then to, to be able to set it in a, in a, in a scene where, I grew up and I know, you know, it was uh, just kind of natural. Was it important for you to set this? I mean, you could have said it anywhere, really. That's Mm. what I felt when I was reading it, certainly. I mean, it's a pretty universal story. Um, Was it important, though, for you, as someone from Dublin, to set it in Dublin um, as a kind of a bit of an homage to the city and where you grew up? Um, Maybe perhaps some of the characters that you've met in life who were presented in, in other forms, I imagine. And that's certainly uh, uh, something that I feel authors do is they kind of 
people converge in the characters that they write. It could be one or two people who influence a particular character. Uh, what is about it for you in influence the characters? And then I suppose Dublin is a character within the book. Yeah, well, um, like I, I know I was listening to uh, Bono, uh, and I know a lot of people don't like him. I'm not a huge fan myself, but uh, he was being <laughs> he was being interviewed and he was being asked how Ireland differs to America. And he was saying that in America that people walk past a mansion and they look up and they'll go, one day I'll own that. And in Ireland, people walk past the mansion and go, one day I'll get him. Uh, and it was just that, that type of Irish mentality. But he was saying like, he can't walk down the street in America or France or whatever, but he can walk down the street in Ireland and it's, oh, all right, Bono, how are you? And he doesn't get bothered. Um, and I, 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 I like that about Ireland and about Dublin. Um, with regards to the, the characters, mm. um, like, I, Harry is kind of based on someone I know, to be okay. honest with you. Okay. <laughs> A lot of characteristics, that, that kind of macho, stereotypical yeah. man. Um, and, you, yeah, you draw from people you meet. And, like, I like meeting different people and I'll, I'll kind of interview them in my own way just so I can get a perspective from someone else's point of view rather than just having my own vision. Mm -hmm. um, and like I remember one night I was coming home from uh, the pub and I was walking past uh, St. James's Gate, the, the uh, Guinness factory, and there was a security guard in his hut the gates were open and there was nobody around and I walked over and I was just asking them like you know do you sit here all night what do you do um why are you here is there some thing that goes on at night that you have to be here why don't you just shut the gates and um yeah so it's, no it's just early they have nighttime hop deliveries and um he actually he read a lot um uh, and um he had he was a, a fisherman so he used to tie flies on the uh fishing hooks and it's just little details like that that you take and you you attribute mm. to somebody and um what makes people tick absolutely and one of the things you kind of mentioned about Sam there is like in, in ways you wanted him to be kind of earthly and then other ways you want him to be kind of very naive. Um, given that he's the protagonist, is there any part of yourself in him? Is it kind of a question of you're <laughs> obliged to ask? Um, or why did you want him to have those two, you know, very differing traits? I mean, he's a, yeah, I mean, so wise in so many regards. And, and then the way he presents and speaks, he's very, you know, he could be somebody you met um you yeah know, he, he doesn't have any airs or graces for someone who's been around for fifteen thousand years so, <laughs> um, and he's very to the point on, on things so what about it is it, are you trying to say something or perhaps uh something you, from tracy has you wish you had yourself um no, i i do wish i had some traits that he has um no i do I, I, there's i i think I'm not sure this is this is terrible. Um I'm not sure if it's in the first book or the second book, but he he uh says he hates Tuesdays and Tuesdays are just my worst day. I hate them. Um and that would be the only thing. Uh, yeah, you're in, not even halfway there on Tuesday. <laughs> I know. Um but where where it come no, I wouldn't have uh I wish. I would yeah. love to have a, a healing talent or a a talent where you could just read somebody from touching them it would be absolutely fantastic it would be absolutely absolutely um yeah and then just uh, one of the the biggest things about him of course he's gonna it's a it's a curse and a blessing in the book um but he's gonna yeah. live forever and i wonder if you were to live forever would this be what you were doing would you write books would you continue to do that or what what would you what would your interest be for you know you could do a lot of I, exploring I, too I yeah, yeah. I, I, I think if I knew I was going to live, I'd make as much money as I could now. <laughs> uh, so I could relax and do what I wanted further on in in, in the years. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I, I know, jumping forward into the, the next book and even the one after that, um, 
you, I'm, go, I'm going to be looking at uh, what it's like in 50 years time or 100 years time or 150 years time and how life will have changed. And, you know, um, I'd asked a lot of people where they saw the world in a hundred years time. And some people were so pessimistic okay. uh, and other people were, were quite optimistic and the medical advancements will be amazing. And, and then, uh, but I think that the, the, the strangest one I got was uh, people are just going to be a lot dumber. Okay. Um, yeah. So it, it's kind of that uh, pessimistic thing that I don't think I have. I, I'd like to see it as a, a, a good future yeah I, I remember listening to um margaret atwood say i mean it's a, what a you know it's a i suppose it's a temptation of hope writing a book because the idea is that someone will read it and she was talking mm. about this pro project they have up in i think it's um i think it's sweden or switzerland and it's a, a museum where they're 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 putting stories there that no one will have read for the future you know and the hope that somebody will open it so they're being kind of preserved and kept in the special paper and all this kind of thing but um yeah they're just stories you know i think fundamentally are about hope because the idea of putting pen to paper is is that somebody would uh, would interrogate it at some point and ask a few questions like like today um <laughs> and, and then selfishly for my own uh, again i mean i've been for anyone who missed it at the start I, I i love to write myself and i've been trying to write a book i haven't been as successful of course <laughs> as what martin has been so i'm going to ask a few questions about his process and um one of the things uh, anyone who's ever kind of i suppose sat down to write is it's it's kind of difficult to deal with your inner critic because you can't really um, allow yourself to flow and, and for ideas to come if you're constantly criticizing it all the time because I mean the pursuit of perfection is, is, is never going to happen so what what are your tools then for sitting down you said you kind of do a brain dump does it come very easily do you find yourself really interrogating the ideas or do you kind of allow things to be are you just one of those people who's very lucky and can tell one side of, one side of the brain can tell the other to shut up <laughs> um I, I suppose what what I'm looking for is the idea. So it's the idea that one I haven't heard of before. Uh, so you're writing original. Mm. Um, and then you might have six things and or you might have 20 things. And out of those 20 things, one idea will stick. Um, and basically what I'll do is if I have 10, 15 ideas, I'll jot them all down and I'll do my brain dump onto a page mm. and then I'll just leave it. I'll walk away. The following day, I'll come back. I'll read through them. Maybe I'll only like six out of those 20. I'll expand it and then go on further. And then the follow, come back the following day, might be down to three. You've got three good ideas. And then you put two aside, you pick your favorite one and you're right and got to work on this and then you just expand it. Um, so you might end up with 20 or 30 pages of what you're going to write about uh, before you start writing. Um, and then for me, it's, it's I, I pick the most interesting part of it and start there. And then I can either work my way back or work my way forward or but once i've got the idea and i've got the plan it flows quite naturally uh, mm. i'll i i try to do at least five pages a day mm. um every day so uh it's tough when you're working full-time as well um yeah. and and you've got kids and houses and bills and everything else in between but it's you have to find the time mm. and what's your most again trying to you know kind of work between all of those things and all of those commitments what's your best time of day to do it is it sit down in the evening is it wake up early is it <laughs> which of those I, I i actually i like to get into work early mm. and i'll i might do two or three pages before i start work <laughs> Good uh, idea. yeah and then you know, I might do half a page during lunch and then I might stay back and finish it off. Or if I come home, I'll jump on and do another two pages. They don't have to be five pages consecutively. Mm. You can, um, 
you break it over the day or you know but yeah no, i'm it's, happy it's once i have five pages done yeah mm. it's a good idea so it's you, you kind of find the moments when you have the time and that, that's that's really important for people especially yeah. i suppose a lot of people who are writing or, or trying to i suppose any project um sometimes you don't always have the time in one chunk but you can find it or retrieve it or stay salvage it yeah. somehow and the, the, hard, the hardest part is when you're actually typing and you know you have something to do in 10 minutes <laughs> but it's flowing but it's it's going really well and you're like oh no i'll get another bit in i'll get another bit in and then your 10 minutes is up and you just have to leave uh, so that's the I'll hardest like part those. of stopping those cat those cat memes if anyone see them at the keyboard um, <laughs> trying to bash something out um but yeah like I, I that's what i find difficult I, like if anyone asks me about writing um which they don't generally but if they if i ever start talking to them and they ultimately have to ask me a question out of politeness uh what i usually say is the hardest thing is sitting down and then standing back up again yes uh, from the writing because once you get into it uh it's, it's very difficult to pull yourself away but it's about making the commitment to sit down and gracie's nodding her head there as well in, in agreement with that um so and then the, the other thing is around we kind of talked about characters there and trying to make characters real and you know I mean, a lot of it is kind of understanding people's motivations and where they sit in the mm. story, because everybody has to have their own story within it yeah. uh, for it to seem authentic. Um, how do you do? Do you spend a lot of time on characters? Do they come as you write? Or um, would you kind of have flesh them out once you see the plan? Okay, okay, this character, what are they doing? What's their motivation? What are, they, what are their fears? What are their whatever? Do you do anything like that? Or do you just kind of Go, go with it and, and, and see see how it unfolds for them and the part they play. A, a, li a little mix of both. I, I know like when, I, when I'm doing uh, my brain dump, I will have five or six main characters. You know, you'll always have your main character or two main characters, but you'll have who they interact with and where the story flows to. But then sometimes out of the left field, the character will just come in and you're, you're writing and you're going, where did this come from? Um, and you're kind of making it up on as you go mm. and uh, sometimes they're the, the most fun um, yeah. you know it's it's and you surprise yourself you're, you're just going you know you, you finish the chapter or you finish their their conversation and you're just like where did that come out of you know it's so sometimes yes i'll sit down i'll concentrate on the character see what they're looking for in the story and then other times it just runs through. Absolutely. And uh, you've obviously self-published the book. Have you any recommendations for how to go about that? Is it difficult? Is it easy? Is it, because um, it, it takes a lot on you. I know you, you spent time getting the cover out done and I believe I have the, 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 the newest cover out. Yep. Um, so how, how did that process, how did you, that come about and what were the considerations you had to make? Yeah, um, the actual publishing is with Kindle and with Amazon is very, very easy. Uh, my problem was I had written in Word. Um, I had checked it in Word. I'd gotten a, a beta readers, the whole lot. And I have a friend of mine. Um, he, he's like a thesaurus and he's brilliant. And he checked it over and I thought, oh, yeah, that's wonderful. I uploaded it. And then... Uh, it was just really bad. Um, talked had turned to take. Um, so a lot of people were taking rather than talking. Um, chapter 12, I turned to chapter 12 Eve. And I published it without even checking. Um, mm -hmm. It was just one of those silly mistakes. Um, which meant going back and changing a lot, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, now, at the time, I had gotten quotes for editors. Mm. Uh, and they were looking for 30 to 45 cent a word. Wow. Uh, in my book, it would have rocked up to mm. about 4,900 and something. Mm. And I just don't have it. I didn't have it. So I was like, who needs an editor? Yeah. Well, we do. <laughs> um, I've been lucky enough to get one. And uh, at the moment, he is working on the guide. So oh, I will upload that once he's finished uh, with no mistakes <laughs> um, and then hopefully he'll continue on my, my, with my second novel um, so that's a, a continuation of mm. Sam's stories and 
Um, so, yeah. Perfect. Well, I'm sure we're all interested as well in, in, in what's next for Simon. Have you any sneak preview you can give us? Or where does it, <laughs> well, we, we know where we, uh, anyone who's, who's finished knows where he's left off. But uh, I suppose there is that kind of, you know, it's still kind of, for me, it's around that question of, um, you know, living forever and what the next adventure will be. And you've kind of said it might, is this the one that's going to dip into the future? Or yeah. is that subsequent books? Or Yeah, well, I, I can say that in the second book, um, Archangel Michael meets the mm. Pope and he actually likes him. So that, that counterbalances the 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 uh, Catholic Church in, in the first book. Uh, he there thinks you. he's a lovely chap. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to open it up there for questions. I, I'm sure some of you have some of you questions. Oh, Gracie's hand is up straight away. Uh, so if you want to unmute yourself, Gracie, and you can talk to the, the author himself, Martin, uh, and ask your question. That was just a round of applause. That was brilliant. Um, Thank yeah, you so much. No, you, you, you did. You did. Re I love that story. Like it is absolutely brilliant. And I'm delighted that um, you're going to have the, the new version of the first novel up as well. That is brilliant because we'll get the praise it deserves. It's a really, 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 really good story. I can't emphasize that enough. And I'm dying to see the second one or read the second one. But um yeah, so what, what was your main inspiration then? And uh, two questions. What was your main inspiration for it? And then the second one was, uh, are you in a writing group? Oh, um, I'll answer the second one first. Writing groups, I'm in several on Facebook. I've, I've, n I've none. Uh, because I've only ventured this as soon as COVID hit, um, I couldn't get into any... Uh, writing groups where people actually meet physically uh, which I would have loved to have done um, but unfortunately COVID came and uh, but I am in a, quite a few on Facebook um, and like the writing it's it's when I have time uh, I'd love to say that I'm collaborating with other people and whatever we have had conversations about ideas and stuff like that but we've never uh, myself and other people in the groups have never collaborated or, or actually uh, produced anything yet uh, but it's great hearing like I said before other people's points of views and stuff like that um, and then inspiration um, I, I think my inspiration to, to write the novel um, was I think I've been trying to do it for so long uh, I've been writing short stories i've been uh doing essays and uh that type of thing and i thought to myself why don't i push myself why don't i just do it and the first novel this this book here that the guide it this started probably eight years ago with an idea and then it got shelved and then i i'd I found, and I hope this doesn't come out in the novel, but I found that uh, when I was at a low point, I would write more. And I think um, for me, that was a way of getting myself out of a low point. Um, it's very therapeutic writing. Um, so I know for the first, I'd say half of the book, I was at a, a, a quite low points in my life when they happened, even though they happened over a span of maybe four or five years. And then the rest of the book happened, I'd say, within two months. It was literally when I thought to myself, right, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to finish this. And it was a strange sense of relief when I finished. And I was like, am I done? Is that where I'm going to leave it? And I'm like, yep, that's that's it. That's that book done. And then it was the anxiety of, will anybody want to read this? You know, will people like it? And um, and then I, ju I just kind of bullied myself into publishing it. So I hope that answers your question. Absolutely. No, that's, that's brilliant. And I'm glad to hear that you're in a few um, writing groups. And as a writer myself, no, it's, it's important to 
to write daily. A lot of people, you probably heard yeah. about morning pages. So the fact you do your five pages religiously daily, yeah. fair play to you. <laughs> well, thanks very much. I know I wish I could say the same. I'm going to have to pick up a few of your uh, your micro habits. Um, and it's just really positive, I think, just to, to hear that this is something that's taken you eight years. And yeah, you did actually, you you completed it and, and something you've done for yourself. And also that mm. uh, it's been something that's been a real, um, you know, support or for, your, for you, a real resource, I would say, in your life. Absolutely. Uh, when, you, when you've needed it. Um, and is, is there anything from that, I mean, uh, that you'd that you'd like to share any particular tips on um uh, basically when you're not in a great place obviously you find it okay to write but is, is there any time when you find it difficult to write say and, and what do you do then people often talk about writer's block and, and mm. how it can affect them lucky enough i haven't had writer's block um i've I'm actually I'm I'm writing a, um, a novel at the moment, and it's 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 outside Sam's story, so it's it's uh, totally separate. But I started about two weeks ago, and I've got maybe 180 pages done so far, and it is just flying out, and it it's. I like it because there's points in the book where I'm laughing. I'm writing it and I'm laughing, so I, I like I know when it reaches the page, it's actually going to be funny. Um, and you know that there's points when you you do sit down and you're you're writing chapters, and there's certain things in the book that I feel sad when I'm writing. Mm. You know, if a, if a character dies or something doesn't work out how you expect it to work out. Mm. Um, you know, you, you you feel sad when you're writing, you know, or if something happens and you feel joyous when you're writing, because um, you're putting yourself in that character's shoes, and you know you're you're feeling what they're feeling, so you can write about their emotions. Um, so yeah, I I, I kind of I tend to put myself in different characters and try and feel it from their point of view. I can't remember who said it now. It's it's bugging me, but uh, that is one of the things that's said about writing: no tears in the writer, no tears in the reader. So, I mean, if you don't feel it, how can you expect anybody else to relate to it? It's something you come back to. You kind of have to be guided by your own emotions um, and trust them. That yes, people absolutely. Going to relate with your experience and your your I suppose your cutting of the characters. Um, I'm just wondering, has anybody else got a, I'm, I'm monopolizing Martin, does anybody <laughs> else have a question for him? I kind of just started asking my own again. I have uh, a question here from Lisa, if you want to uh, unmute there. It's a bit of a statement as well as a question, like um, we're just amazed, all the people here that have read the book um, in within our estate, like, because for us, Martin is just, the husband and father that gets off the bus every evening and walks up the road and we just never right. realise and says, hey Lisa Love. <laughs> <laughs> we just never realised how much creative creativity was actually in his mind. And when we sat and read the book, we were like, I won't course this is going to be Oh my God, that's Martin wrote that. You know, we just, we couldn't put it together. But just wants a huge congratulations, Martin, on the first book. Second one is going to be even more fantastic. But I have a quick question for you. This new novel that you're writing, it, yeah. please tell me it's not about four witches that sit outside. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. But that, that's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa. You're very good. It's called The Coven. Um... <laughs> there you go. Um, I was just that, that's wonderful to hear I'm sorry Amanda has her hand up there as well I think uh, Amanda cut, yeah if you want to ask Hiya, a question Martin I'm Amanda um, oh, hello Amanda I want to take it back to more of a reading perspective yes. um, are you reading anything I tend not to read when I'm writing okay but the last book I read was Paddy Cole's autobiography ah okay okay <laughs> I, I try to uh, mix uh, as much as possible what I'm reading. So okay, I'm not reading yeah. one genre or one yeah. type of book. I just, I like, I love reading in general. 
Um, yeah. Pretty much like that since the, the COVID hit. I hadn't finished a book in years. I'd say I had three books that were half read. And once COVID hit, that was it. I was reading. Like, I think I've read 11 books this month. Fantastic. And I kind of tried to keep it, you know. Yeah. Keep it going. So. And have you any thoughts of doing anything yourself? No. I I can't even I, when I when they asked me questions yesterday, I found it hard to to say them. I'm not sure. Did you see my review on Instagram? I even said in it, I wish I had the ability to to get the words out. Oh, like right. I I can think about things, but I can't think of how to put it out there. Um, and even then, when I hear other people talking about the book, I'm like, oh yeah, like I did see it from that perspective, but I didn't <laughs> it didn't click with me. Yes. So no, I'm I prefer to read. <laughs> did you like it? I did. Excellent. I did. Thank you so it, much. Some of it was a bit with the angels Rapid. and demons kind of threw me a little bit. But All right. I had said last night as well it, that if there is a second one, I will read it. <laughs> oh good. Yeah. Well, thank you so, very much. No problem. Thank you. Would stay again, as they say on Airbnb. <laughs> <Would stay again. laughs> um, well, I think uh, unless I'm, I don't think I'm trying to look through to see if we've any more questions. I don't want to miss. Oh, sorry, Kathy. Kathy, I'm throw it to you. I don't really have a question. I just want to say I loved the book. Absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Flew through it, and I'm just raging that I've read it all now and I can't <laughs> reread it because I know what's going to happen. So I'm just waiting for the second one. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Kat. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So hurry up, man. <laughs> oh, the Martin thing. <laughs> <laughs> and waiting here for it. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm trying to, oh, Anthony, I'll throw it to Anthony there. Um, Martin, just a, a question. Um, a, and what advice would you give to somebody who's considering taking the plunge to write something? Um do it just uh it's it can be very very scary um and i think the best thing you can do is just forget about it uh, as in forget about the outsides you know write it for yourself first mm -hmm. and write write what you what you know and write what you like um as i said before if it makes you laugh it'll make other people laugh if it makes you cry it'll make other people cry um concentrate on how you how you're feeling when you're when you're writing and um just push yourself you have to yeah it, it's not easy taking or trying to find the time to do it but you have to push yourself that would be my advice <laughs> thanks so much martin thank you perfect we're going to have another little look around the room i think you might be safe, Martin, from any further interrogation. Um, well, I'm feeling very inspired anyway. It's been an absolute joy to, to speak to you this evening. And uh, I'm going to try your habit, perhaps, of those, those uh, writing at different points of the day rather than, you know, trying to, to sit down in, uh, in the evening only and find, and find time when I'm probably not at my uh, most sharpest uh, mentally or most sharp. Um, so th thank you. I, I don't think there's anything else, Anthony, unless you want to have any final words to say or are we all we all good for this evening. No, it was just a, it was a pleasure to kind of listen in in the conversation. As I said before the recording, um, I was going to have my jellies and listen in. And that's exactly what I did. It was a, a remarkable conversation. Um, Martin, you may have enjoyed the, the writing process and it may, may have been perfect for you at the time, but uh, I've enjoyed listening to you. I've enjoyed reading your book so far. I will get to the end. <laughs> um, and you are really brave to be able to share what you've written to the world. Um, so thank you for sharing and thank you for being so brave. Well, thank you, and, and, and thank you for this opportunity, and uh, I've really enjoyed this interview, and uh, thank you to everyone who's read it and, and liked it, yeah. and even the people that didn't like it, thank you. <laughs> and thanks for speaking to me, Martin, thank you, and thank you everybody for joining us this evening, it's been lovely to see all your faces and, and feel inspired and get, get the, the lovely energy off everybody, and, and the love for reading. Amanda, I'm going to have to try and catch up with your 11 books 11 a month books. now. <laughs> thank you very much, Kate, it was lovely speaking to you. Lovely speaking to you. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.